Hello YouTube, this is another video for CryptoCoop and today I will talk about what is private key, public key and why it is being called cryptocurrencies. So first it is cryptocurrencies because all these addresses in the ledger is generated using cryptography. In computer science, cryptography is um, encrypting, encrypting some long string using some algorithm that is represent that long string. Uh, using keys and stuff so private key and public key so the private key it's the most essential thing that you can hold let's say Alice has a private Alice has a private key and using that private key Alice can generate a public key so this public key is essentially what they call it for example a Bitcoin wallet it is uh, totally fine if you share your public key with everybody else however this public key is only decryptable using your private key and private key and your private key is what holding everything it holds all your money and everything now um, what is certificate and what is signing message and also like what is hashing so for example let's say you have one diamond and I will tell you, prove it to me, prove to me that you have this diamond. And okay, you cannot give me the diamond because I will take it. So what you can do, you can somehow use some algorithm that gives a value that by reading that value, I can make sure that you have this diamond in your hand. However, I cannot receive the diamond by decrypting this value. This is hashing. So for example, if you have a string, let's say one, two, three. If we hash this one to three, it will always give you one value. No matter what, one to three will give you a single unique value. However, this unique value is irreversible. You cannot transform this unique value to one to three. So this is hashing and other algorithm that's being used. Don't need to think about it too much. The most important thing to know is your private key. It's very important. If you hold 10 Bitcoins, those 10 bitcoins are retrievable using your private key so now that brings the problem of holding your assets your bitcoin your zac coin your ethereum in exchanges now exchanges websites like bitphoenix bitrex uh kraken they will show let's say you have two bitcoins but they never give they never share the private key of those bitcoins that's why if it's being lost and it's gone forever unless they have some future plan to give your bitcoin back so i suggest if you have too much money i think more than maybe two or three thousand dollars it depends on you like think what will hurt you if you lose depends on your financial situation if it's that much and keep it inside your own cold wallet so what is a cold wallet there are few ways you can keep your private key. Remember, a private key is not really a key, it's just a long, very long password. That password is just like a Google account password, it's just a password that opens an account or opens a wallet. So how can we keep this private key? How can we keep this string? So there are ways they call it a uh, paper wallet. You might, hear, you might have heard of that paper wallet so what paper wallet is is basically you can see it in the video that is it's a paper that holds your private key or also you can hold your public key you can give to people like hey send me this money or maybe f as your business card so now there is a problem with this paper wallet and that if it's being lost your money is gone. There is no way you can find it. There is no way you can retrieve your private key. It's gone forever. And if somebody else sees it, also they can take the money. Now, one way is to have a private key in printed on a paper. I do not recommend that. It's a very, very bad idea. Another way is to have a software running on your desktop that can save these private keys and you can use them. Now, this is vulnerable to losing your hard drive having a virus, the virus crop the key and it's gone or somebody hacking and they can view it. That is another problem. I think if you have a lot of money, especially for me, if my money is more than $3,000, I 
I will keep it in my cold drive. And my cold drive, uh, there are a few. One is Ledger, one is Trezor, I believe. And these are very good because they will keep your private key within themselves. They will not share it with any other service and you can send and receive money using this. So for example, I have my uh, Ledger wallet. That is very good. It actually makes my life much easier since the moment I bought this. But um, there is a trade-off and the trade-off and the problems come with the Ledger Nano S is that I do a lot of trading and basically I have trading bots and I'm looking at the price every time. And if the price goes up suddenly, I need to buy. I need to like, let's say I'm in Bitfinex, price is going up. I know that for example, SegWit is up and the price is likely to go from 2000 to 5000. I need to buy immediately. Now my money is in here and I cannot buy it on Bitcoin because my money is inside my ledger. So having the money here means you have to send it from here to your exchange and there you can actually buy and sell. So what I do, I keep my main assets within this safe and secure and I do my uh, deals and my trades in Bitfinex or in Bitrex, which I have some money always saved a little bit. I usually keep $1,000 in my Bitfinex and in my, in my uh, Bitrex waiting for some situation that I can fast act to the market situation. So uh, let me show you how, uh, what is uh, like, uh, what is the interface of Ledger Nano S. So this is the interface of Ledger Nano S. Basically you can run it, you can receive money using this public key. So it's still safe. This is my public key. If you wish, you can send me some money. And uh, as long as you don't show your private key, it's safe and secure here. Another um, good benefits of having Ledger Nano S is that you can sign your transactions using this. As long as you have your private key, you can sign it. Now, why would you need to sign your transaction if Bitcoin is decentralized and is, uh, is kind of anonymous or whatever. Sometimes there are ICOs and what are ICOs is initial coin offering that there's a new company, you want to help them. And in future, if their cryptocurrency goes up, you can make some money. However, let's say you send them one Bitcoin as support. Now, how do you want to prove that this Bitcoin comes from you? So what they usually do is that it's automatically locked. And what they usually do, they say, okay, send us this Bitcoin and please sign your transaction using your email. And on the Bitfinex, on Bitrex, I don't think there's a way you can do that. Maybe there's a new way, I'm not sure. But as far as I know, because you don't hold your private key, there is no way you can sign it. Maybe you can these days, but as before I was searching, I couldn't. That's why I have this Nano S. I go inside, I saw my last transaction and I signed it and the ICO was successful. So these are the thing I hope I covered everything about private keys and public keys and all sorts of wallets. So keep your private key safe, share your public key with your friends. If you're new to it, use Bitrix, use Bitfinex, use Kraken. If you're in other country, I'm sure they have a lot of system, use them. But if you hopefully you get lucky and you make a lot of money and you want to do the long term saving, use Ledger Nano S or Trezor. I think Ledger Nano S is better because they support more cryptocurrency. As far as I know, they support BCH, BTC, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Zagcoin, Dashcoin, Ripple, and I think IOTA hopefully is coming soon. Uh, name and same, they have their own wallet. So that is it. Uh, please put your comments below and if it wasn't clear, I'll try to make another video. And um, please subscribe. I'll be happy uh, to make another video soon explaining uh, how we can transfer money using Ledger Nano S and let's, let's actually do the live preview of me sending money from my Ledger Nano S and receive it, receiving it in uh, Bitfinex and vice versa. Thank you for watching and stay tuned until the next video.